Cool. How has music shaped you as an entrepreneur? <laughs> so, before I even answer that question, I have to acknowledge my idols. Um, you have to think about Jay Z. You have to think about uh, um, Puff Daddy, Sean Diddy Cone. Um, you have to think about Nipsey Hussle. You have to think about um, Rick Ross. You have to think about um, Dr. Dre. And when you think about these people, you don't even think about them in the sense of music. You think about these people in the sense of business. And what I've noticed with the, the lifestyle that I live and the people that I look up to, I don't necessarily look into the, the generation of the now. I'm a millennial. So people will, um, people can look at me and go, okay, you might like the little Uzi verse and the little Dirks. And you might like, uh, you know, a YNW Melly. You might like... Uh, you know, all the young, gunner, baby. Like, you might like the young boys, which I do. Don't get it twisted. I do like the young boys. Um, before it's a significant influence on my life, I like the OGs. You know, um, people, uh, it's, it's a quote that my mentor has. Um, a long pencil uh, outlasts a, a short memory. And when you think about it from that perspective, you learn from the OGs and you learn from their memories. You learn from the things that they've done. And when you learn from the things of what they've done, you instill that into your life. Not only you instill that, instill that into your life, but you sharpen it. When you sharpen it, you put it into your own twist. And when you put it into your own twist, you've outdone what they've done. So, for example, I might be the, you know, the next um, puff because I might find an artist in Toledo or I might find uh, somebody in, you know, Lima, Ohio, and I sign them and boom, they out of here. Or I might I might go to that next business venture and I notice how Puff had KC and JoJo but turned it and go you know what I'm not just gonna do um, you know the whole uh, uptown uptown uh, New Jack City vibe I'm gonna go into rap and this hardcore gangster stuff and I'm gonna flip my entire brand I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna go to Biggie who that hardcore rap I sell dope but I'm the I'm I'm the hardest rapper I'm the greatest rapper of all time or I might go to Jay Z who you know, Jay Z um, went to several several deals or went to several record labels, and nobody wanted to sign him, and he still betting on himself, and betting on himself turned him into a billionaire. You know, it's some certain type of specific situations and uh, obstacles that they went through that defined them or who they really are. So, how has those obstacles and those situations defined my life and my lifestyle, um, and also my journey in entrepreneurship? It's turned me into an animal. There's nothing that you can put in front of me that I ain't going to get through. I've been broke. I've been um, the uh, the second up runner. I've been the person who people don't look at me as somebody who can even do the things that I'm doing. Yo, I was selling phones at Verizon. I was selling phones at at and I was a Chipotle grill manager. Like, I was a cook at Chipotle. I was a, a busboy at in this country club i mean the list goes on and on and on but one thing you can't tell me is i'm not a hustler i I'll work anybody that's in front of me and the people that i just named puff rick rick ross diddy i'm sorry i already named diddy but jay-z um dr dre all them people they outwork anybody that's in front of them they don't even care about money they outwork people so much that their work speaks for their entire catalog from every person I just named, it's not just music that you think about. You think about business. You think about family. You think about legacy. You think about so many things when you talk to these people that eventually the list is too long for you for you to even communicate to another person if they're not in that specific realm. So with that being said, already I'm already five years, ten years ahead because I already know the next nine or ten companies that I'm about to open up. When you're thinking about from a different three to five year perspective. You know that you're not worried about what other people are doing. You're not worried about what other people are trying to do. You shift culture. You shift what people look at as culture. So when we in Toledo and people thinking that selling Ugg slides is cool, and this is no disrespect. This ain't like me. I'm coming at them specifically and personally. I'm just naming an example that's coming to my head. People looking at Ugg slides as a hustle. People looking at selling dinners as a hustle. People looking at selling logos as a hustle. Nah, we define a recession-proof businesses over here. No matter what the economy, no matter what nobody say, I'm building an entire corporate veil. 
If you don't know that, do your Googles. Doing an entire corporate veil, doing a type, uh, an entire list of uh, companies to where it don't matter if Galen died today. I got a million people in position that can take not only take over my legacy, but take over what 3E means to the world. Think about Apple. You think about AT&T. You think if the owner died or the actual founder of the company died today, you think AT&T or Apple going to stop running today? Hell no. They done put so many people in position to go that set themselves up for this entire destruction of a company to where you go, I know they're going to keep blasting. Uh, uh, Steve Jobs died. Tim um, Smith or Tim Cook took over immediately. And they still running. Like and they never left. Now, is he doing a great of a job? That's subjective. People might look at like, no, nah, he ain't doing... That's fine, but Apple's still like a trillion dollar company. It's gonna say it's gonna be the same thing for three E. So how has music inspired my life? Is I look at each mogul, each person I look up to, Nipsey's, Ricks, Puffs, Jay Z's, and I take any business oriented thing or any entrepreneurial thing that they did, and I put it into one pot of gumbo. And when I put it into one pot of gumbo, each business tactic or each business entrepreneurial thing that I do, I take all their experiences. And when I go into negotiation, when I go into defining the business plan, when I go into making sure that my marketing is correct. I take all of that and go into that specific step and make sure I'm doing it in the way that they want it or they would have done it. And when you operate from that, you're not operating from mediocrity. You're not operating from averageness. You're operating from alien greatness to where if somebody even came in your realm to even try to stop you from what you're doing, you know that it's not even, it's irrelevant. So when you take something and you turn it into an empire and you go, I know I'm not supposed to belong in this one industry or this certain lane, you go to a different sphere. And every all those people that I just named is me. I may not be at their level yet, but it's me. When 3E, when it's all said and done, 3E is going to be in that realm. It's just a matter of time. So... When you take the 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 um the courses of where these guys have went and where they taken it, it was always a matter of time. Dr. Dre, he was with N.W.A. People looked at him as just a producer and a rapper. Was he one of the most prolific producers at that time? Of course, but nobody would have thought he made a billion dollars with Apple off of Beats. Nobody would have thought Jay Z would have founded two record labels and reinvented himself so many times to the point where he was eight different personalities. Nobody would have thought that Nipsey Hussle would have uh, a corporate veil to the point where Marathon was in each business that he opened and all of them were successful. Business is music. Music is business. And when you master the both of them, you know how to build a legacy. Yeah, so you just answered my next question. I was going to say, it may already be in there, but I was going to ask, should... The next wave of like entrepreneurship or entrepreneurs model music and a hundred percent. You gotta think about it. I, the corporate veil I'm speaking of. When you got a holding company up top and you got several companies beneath it. If you got a record label, let's just say something as simple as that. Record label. You got merchandise. You got an artist who is getting features. You got something as. Um, you have uh, uh, festivals that that artist does. You have um, interviews that that guy does that he gets paid off of. And then you have, you know, it's a million other things that you have on the umbrella of a company. But you have to start modeling yourself in that from that structure because if you don't model it from that, your business is not going to be properly set up. But on top of that, the people who is running that business is not going to be able to orchestrate it to where you turn it into an actual empire. When I, all them things that I just named, it's a million employees that can go into each company that I just named. And you change the lives. You change the family lives. So when you do that, you do something that's bigger than you. So 100%, people should model the business industry. Now, should they should they take the, the business industry's morals and tactics behind it? No, because everybody that's in the music industry is not for the culture of black people. So... And if you put, and if you turn that into an actual different race, let's say if, it, if a, the music industry was in the culture of white people, they are in the culture of fucking people over. So if you fucking people over, you're doing wrong by what you believe in or what God wants you to do. And once you do that, you moving on nothing but financial gain and nothing but selfish gain. 
And that's not how business is supposed to be oriented. It's always supposed to be a win-win situation. When it's always a win-win situation, people are going to notice that. People are going to see that they can get a gain from anything that you put into the businesses that you want to open. So, yeah. I was meant to ask you before that the question I asked, but what specific mo moments in rap history changed you as an entrepreneur or a person in general? Uh, the Source Awards, I forgot what year it was, but when Death Row came out and each artist opened, uh, performed and they came out of their caged sales, um, it made me think about like how I would open up each business that I open. Um, it's like a series of events that happen. Um, uh, Puff opening up Bad Boy, um, how he could not miss his first five records that he came out with was Platinum. Um, Jay Z, how he came out with uh, when he came out with the state of Rockefeller, um, he came out with Beanie Siegel, Freeway, uh, Young Guns, all those guys, and then um, also um, Rick Ross, how he came, how he established himself as the rapper's favorite owner, like how he came out and he had Meek Mill and Wale. And not only just from a business perspective, how I learned emotional stability from him because he stood with Meek Mill through all them trials and tribulations when he was on probation for 11 years straight. How he spoke with Wale or stuck with Wale when Wale was going crazy um, and complex and how he was going crazy in interviews when people kept under looking him as the, or looking at him as the underdog. So when you take all of that and you put that in a, a business and entrepreneurial um, tactics and mindsets, you go that no matter what trial or tribulation that you go through, you always gonna go through something that's gonna develop you into a better owner, business owner. And I think through them things I just named, from Dre uh, losing Tupac, from Dre losing Death Row Records, losing Interscope Records. Now he is, um, I'm sorry, not losing Interscope Records, but he's moving to you know TDE with Kendrick Lamar and all of those guys. And then you look at Puff where. You know, Puff lost Biggie, and but he he reinvented himself so many times. Whereas going into his solo career and then going into you know branding himself in different ventures, which is whether it's a rock, whether it's um, you know um, uh, Delion Tequila, um, you know all types of stuff. And then going into Nipsey, who was on a ten-year spree of just grinding hard every single year before it. He got his actual record label deal and getting it in the sense that he wanted. You know, he got a record label deal from 80 to 80 to 20%. So 80% of the things that he's uh he released was in his his name. It was his ownership. 20% went to Atlantic. You know how hard it is to get them type of record deals in this day and age? 360 is a new normal. So a rapper like Lil Uzi come up and he go to uh Atlantic Records and DJ Drama and DJ Drama and um, you know, uh um I forgot his name, I can't think of, but they spent him for a 360 and he one of the hottest artists in the world. Mm -hmm. You're going to tell me, I don't really care if you cry. Oh, I never. And the hottest song, I forgot what year that was, but 2016? he couldn't do nothing because he was stuck in a contract that he knew he was getting fucked on. And make it sound the same thing on the world. Make it sound the same thing. And now that low key, if you, besides that, that hit that she had with Beyonce, I mean, from a, 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 a commercial standpoint, it messed up. It, it, not messed up, but it fluctuated the, the rate of her career. If she would have kept that momentum going after that song, classy, bougie, ratchet. If she went out of her deal to where, okay, boom, we coming with this. And no telling what her career could have went to. If we being honest and we being bluntly. It's still, it's still very It's good. still going, but remember, you're not making money unless you are venturing outside of touring. So you can't tell me Megan Thee Stallion making the most money off her streaming. You can tell me to uh, make an assignment, making money off her, making that much money off her merch versus her actual shows that she doing. Mm -hmm. Shows pay for everything that an artist do. A global artist. Now, if you're a local artist, you may eat your money off of merch and streaming. But a global artist, eight out of ten times, some some man with a toupee and a suit on. Got their hand in your in your money. No, it's okay. No, but um, streams have like so, like 
like companies like Spotify and Apple Music have sort of like detrimented artists. In a hundred ways, though. Like, like you have to understand that they're not making their money off like no nah, because their actual songs because people don't even know what a stream is. I, I don't even know. What a stream no, is. nobody knows what a stream is. It's only the people who founded them them streaming platforms that know what a stream is. And until we find that out, it's going to a lot. Of, it's going to be a lot of artists don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me. You can't tell. You can't tell me. Pookie, uh, rotation game P know what a stream is or know how to calculate it. You can't tell me Relly Cole know how to stream with a, uh, tell me the actual definition of what a stream is. You can't tell me what DD Porter know what an actual stream is. They just looking at their tune core, making sure they getting their bread. And if, if it's high. And if it's high. And looking at album and record sales, they not looking at what an actual stream is. If they knew what an actual stream is, I can promise you whatever they getting, if they had the balls to do it, and I'm not saying that they don't, but most independent artists, they probably would go ahead and go, nah, man, I'm going to do this independent. So instead of putting your music on a public streaming platform, go put it on your own website. And let's see who really mess with you. But the thing is, when people want to really mess with you, look up Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie, you don't know who that is. He's an R&B artist. When this social media was just getting hot, what did he do? He took all of his music off of streaming platforms, and then he put it on his own website from an independent album. He made three million, two million dollars from an independent album with no push and literally just him doing all the marketing. That's insane. That's like alien. Nobody can. Nobody can do that. So I'm saying that to say when you're looking at these streams and you're looking at people who really calculate um, what their money is actually worth and what their mute. No, sorry, not their money, but what their actual um, artwork art is worth. They don't really know. And you can't blame them. It's the whole world. It ain't just rappers. It's, I mean, country, whoever. People who ain't tied into the actual people behind the music industry scenes, they don't know. So, 